Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, today we have as our special guest, Matthew Leonard. He's the one I go to when I, I really uh, want to see what, what the Holy Spirit is doing and seek for clarity and understanding of, of what's happening today uh, you know, in the church and the world. He's, he's a, a good friend of mine, too. A special shout out to his son, Jack. We love his son, Jack. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure and our special guest, Matthew Leonard. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I was thinking about my favorite, one of my favorite verses that's just stayed with me for my whole life um, is, uh, who have I in heaven but thee, O God? And there's none upon this earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart fail me, but you are the strength of my life and my portion forever. Uh, think about that. In, in the old days in, in, in Israel, when they when they t went into the promised land and they began to divide up the lots by by tribe, uh, by uh, clan, by individual families, those those uh, there were borders put up on those lot plots that let them know this is my family inheritance. It's their portion, uh, and it was supposed to be in perpetuity. If you rented it out or sold it every seventy years during the year of jubilee. It was returned to your family. That's how important that, that inheritance is. But think about it. We don't have an inheritance of land or, or of, of uh, you know, some big CDs maybe some family member left us. What we have is our portion is Jesus Christ himself, the, 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 the Son of God. Uh, you know, the, we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's our inheritance. And what's really neat, what's, I don't know how to say this, is you receive your inheritance when someone dies. And Jesus died for us. And so you have your inheritance in Christ right now. So we want to live that to the fullest. We're, we're, our guest today is Matthew Leonard. Love this brother so much. I don't know what it is. When I see him, I see integrity. And when I see him, I see someone who wants to be faithful to the Lord and, and to the truth. And so uh, we're glad to have you on board with us today, Matt. Good to see you. It's great to be back with you, Bear. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> I was telling my wife, Cindy, today, you know, we've been redoing things in our condo here in Hawaii. You know, for a little while, we had our house in Florida. I had to have that house that we were, I was there for a little while just so I could meet her and marry her, I think, is, was God's plan. <laughs> but I keep saying to her, all the cool guys have their books behind them, you know. And, and so we were just saying before I contacted you, we're going to put my bookshelf back there with all my cool books. Because <laughs> I love my books. I love being surrounded by them. I love going in them. Uh, Father Mitch Packwa's house, or, or or with Mike Aquilina, he's just surrounded by his books, and I see your bookshelf in the background. So, that's our next project: is to get my all of my books out of the closet and out where I can, I can see them. What what book are you reading these days, by the way? You know, uh, I'm reading multiple books. If you could see the the sides <laughs> of my desk, they're like stacked high with well, different me, books. So yeah, I got, tell me, what are I the mean, I got the Sanctifier. Uh, this is on the Holy Spirit oh, that's, uh, by Archbishop I, Luis Martinez. That you know, I've read that, that book maybe ten years ago. It's fantastic. You, uh, if you so, I, so I must have been on the right track. And then what do you have? What's that? I got Spiritual Theology by Father Jordan Amon. This is a kind of a classic text on uh, the spiritual life and going really deeply into the spiritual life. I use this quite a bit in my work. And of course, uh, you know, fan favorite of Introduction to the Devout Life by Francis de Sales. Amen. And I could probably. Keep going for another five minutes with the stack. <laughs> well, give me, give me two more. Me give here. me two more. I want to see him. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Uh, here you go. The Spiritual Life by uh, Father Adolf Tanqueray. This is a tome uh, on the spiritual life. This is this is actually kind of like a it's like a priest manual uh, in the sense that it, it was really used to help priests uh, become spiritual directors. And we all know it's really hard to find spiritual directors these days. Right. Well, one of the reasons why is because this stuff isn't taught uh, as much anymore uh, in seminaries. Yeah. So I've dug way into this stuff. And, and of course, uh, man, you can't really talk about the spiritual life. There's so many places you could go. Oh, but this yes. is collected works of uh, St. John. I have that Ross, book too. So. The, 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 the collected works of, of um, show it to us again. 
St. John of the Cross, and uh, it's got all the classics in there. Yeah, Sentinel, Carmel. You yeah, know, I've Dark got Night that Soul, same. I got that same vault. Hey, you know what? It's like I got to ask you this question. I hope it's not probing too, too, uh, too many secrets. But do you underline your books? <laughs> if I opened it up and showed you the inside, it looks like the Bible when I was still Protestant, you know? <laughs> yeah, highlighted and underlined and notes. It's exactly right. And that's kind of how I write. I get inspired by the things that I'm reading. Yeah, me and too. And so something will strike me, and I actually write in the margins of my books. Amen, me too. And, and, and I, I kind of I, translate that. I, I, uh, me too. I was talking with Bishop Noonan, uh, the Orlando Bishop, uh, a couple of years ago, and I said, I write in my books. Is that is that a sin? And he goes, he does too. But he uses a, a very a ruler and a pencil, so that he can erase them someday. But I just desecrate them. I mean, I have this beautiful volumes of the early church fathers and the volumes on their on their commentaries, and I feel so guilty. But it's it's just the way I read. I underline and I may, and I take notes. And but you write so often. Uh, what 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 is. Uh, it just that it inspires of course that's what it's there for it is indeed sacred reading and you do indeed feel like you're having a dialogue with the lord when you read scriptures or the catechism or 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 some of these incredible books what what, what book are you working or are you work i know you you're writing for your films are you working on a book too or what's what's the latest you're working on I've got a, a, a fair bit of my conversion story uh penned uh i don't know when that's going to come out uh it's interesting because so many converts to the Catholic Church write their conversion stories pretty quickly, right? I mean, because it's fresh and it's exciting. And right. Stephen Ray, I for example. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of them, right? And I haven't, uh, I've been Catholic for 23 years now, and uh, it's kind of getting to that point. It takes a while to Catholicize Bear, you know? And, <laughs> and, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to wait. I wanted, it, it's got to seep in, right? I mean, it, it's it's interesting to me that the, that oftentimes I will still find myself with a kind of a uh, a nuance or a worldview or kind of a deeper weed, and for lack of a better term, of the of my old Protestant mindset. I don't mean to use that in a majority yes, sense, I like it's it. a, a negative thing, you know. But I, I'm I'm more Catholic now than I was then. Put it that yeah, way. Yeah, it really is true. And you know, praise God for our Protestant brothers and sisters. Absolutely. Oh man, Absolutely. I, 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 my Cindy and I were just at my. I don't even want to tell you what year reunion, high school reunion. I hadn't been back since <laughs> high school. I went to this school in Texas for one year, just uh, and I, then I went to Baylor. What was so phenomenal to me is I walked in. I didn't know if they'd even remember me because I only went there for a year. But per person after person after person, and all all Protestants came up to me and said, "We love your ministry." You know, and and they show such a love for for, uh, and they know it's Catholic, but. Uh, what it, what Cindy said when we left is she said first of all, those men there are real men, and secondly those people are good people. They love Jesus. They put Jesus first. And nowadays, even though we feel so fortunate to be, uh, I, I hate to say it, but like swimming in the deep end of the pool, <laughs> you know, we have so much depth there. We still we need to stick together as Christians. I was reading. I think it was in the liturgy of the hour last week where St. Augustine was saying to all those who call, who say our father, the words our father, you know, in the, in the prayer are our brothers and we need to stick together. But having said that, uh, the depth of Catholic teaching and it, so it's taken you 23 years. Are you starting to get it yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's finally started to get through my thick skull for sure. Uh, but it does, it takes a while to sink in. And the, frankly, the more, uh, the longer I'm Catholic, the more I love the Catholic faith. I, in fact, I love it more now than even the night I was first received. And me too. I just I can't imagine not being Catholic. And while I, I love our separated brethren, and that's what we call them, right? Uh, yeah. Protestant brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, that's just not a way of life I could go back to because I've discovered the fullness of the truth in the Catholic faith and that Jesus has given to us. And I desperately want them to experience the same thing. It's not a Amen. I'm right and you're wrong. It's a please come in and, and feast on what it is we've yeah. got. It's incredible, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, and, you know, one of the big, biggest things is, is uh, just the teaching authority of the church. Um, when, I, when I go to um, Protestant Bible studies, I hear a lot of, well, I think it means this, I think it means that, I think it means that. Now, there could be many applications uh, of Scripture, uh, 
but really only one real genuine interpretation. I think the early church fathers would, would uh, as I'm reading through them, you know, they would use allegorical thoughts sometimes too, kind of at the spirit, soul, and body level of the, of the scripture verses. But, um, but there's, there may be many applications, but, but the interpretation, some of the interpretations, you want to have a teaching authority that really goes back 2,000 years to help us understand that. Let's talk a little bit more about that when we come back from the break. So I know you're up to no good. You're doing some, you, you've got a new thing going on. Uh, what's, your, what's your website, first of all? The science of sainthood.com is uh, what I have been involved in for the last couple of years. Is the subtitle uh, Bear Wozniak? <laughs> All I've learned from Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back. Your Actually, my new, yeah. my new book is called The 12 Rules of Manliness. All the, the, what I've learned from uh, Matthew Leonard. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel the Moon Markham with another episode of Country Up, a part. Two times work took me across the country ahead of my family. Another time was separated from them for better part of a year in order to make ends meet. A part is hard. There is one particular fellow that works serious hard at keeping things apart or causing things to come apart. That would be the devil himself. Oh yes, he's real. The word diablos means the one who separates. He's been in the separating business since ancient time. We have to admit he's been fairly successful at living up to his name. Amazing what destruction he's accomplished with only one primary tool, lying. Confronting some religious liars, Jesus charged, You belong to your father the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Could be that's why folks lie so much. Learned it from their daddy, the devil. So question is, how does one stop old slew foot in his tracks? Same way Jesus did. Repeatedly struck him down with the truth. It's why the Bible's called the sword of the spirit. Jesus said Diablos was not holding to the truth. So stands to reason that one who holds to the truth will not be deceived. There's a Bible verse, a counter blow, if you will, for each deception and temptation. Now, holding on to the truth can take a good deal of effort, like resisting the temptation of a beautiful woman, or cheating on your tax return, or resisting a powerful want to pass on a word of gossip. So know how to use your sword, strap it on, and draw it for battle blood without hesitation when called upon. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. It's so great to have this radio show. It's probably the best radio show that's ever existed uh, because I have the best guests. I have incredible guests. People would never give me the time of day because I have a radio show. They'll spend time with me. And I learned so much. Matthew Leonard is my guest today from uh, the science of sa- scienceofsainthood.com. Uh, but, it, you know, it's, it's, it's when you're Catholic, Matthew, we were talking about before we took the break, you do learn something every day that you thought you know oh i don't or you'll just someone will come up to you not a theologian or anything like that just just a normal catholic say by the way did you know this well no i didn't you know because there's just so much richness it's like a feast you know every day it's true and and sometimes uh that feasting can actually get a little distracting in a sense sometimes i think we 
we start to dive into this, that, and the other so much so that we forget the basics of what really comprises the spiritual life, you know, well, let's and talk this, about that. Well, it happened to me, and, you know, when you first become Catholic, it's just like what you're saying, Bear, you, you discover this treasure that's at your feet and you're like, I never knew any of this stuff, you know, and there was a time I went through some anger, like how come this was withheld from me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but as you're diving into that whole treasure chest and you're exploring all these jewels of the faith and you're going down this hole and that hole and it's this like, father it's, and it's, that To father. me, you know what it's like? It's like uh, we love to watch old westerns. You know, I have a friend here in, in, who has a gold mine in uh, in uh, Australia. It's like you're, you're, you're working away, working away, and then you find this little vein. And then, and then you got to follow it, and it comes to a mother load, and then there's another vein, and pretty soon you're way in the recesses of this cave, and you're like, how did I even get here? And you got to come back to, it's not all about you know, head knowledge, it's about re personal relationship. It's, it's not either or, it's both end. It is a both end, and sometimes we can go so far down those rabbit holes or go so far into the mind that we, we actually miss the real mother load which yes. is the the spiritual life of the church and the heart and soul of what actually divinizes us and makes us like jesus christ so that we can spend eternity with him and so you, just, you can dive into the head knowledge you can do the, the apologetics you can do all the rest of that kind of stuff but at the end of the day that's not what the lord's going to ask the lord's going to say do you know me you know or, and or do i, or know, do I you? know you yeah, yeah i never knew yeah so you just said a whole lot in the, that one sentence you used the word that we would be divinized um do you want to talk to us about that process? Uh, you, you have the science of sainthood. I didn't know it was a science, by the way. You know, it, that, I get that right from St. Augustine. Uh, and he calls it the of science course you of do. the saints. <laughs> 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 Augustine, as I used to call him. But, uh, you know, in, in St. Catherine of Siena, uh, she called it the holy science of love. So mm. there is a science. I think too many of us um, think that the Catholic spiritual life is kind of a free for all that, you know, all we really have to do is stay out of a, out of mortal sin and wait for Jesus to come back or we die, whichever one happens first, and then we're going to be okay. And there's a sense in which, yeah, you know, if we're not in mortal sin, we'll be okay, Lord willing. But there's a goal there. I mean, the goal is for you and I to spend an eternity with Jesus Christ. And what that really means is that we become like him. And this is, to me, the public secret of the Catholic faith, that it's not just a matter of, of salvation in the way that we're saved from something. We are saved for deification. It's mind-blowing when you think about it, but to become like Jesus Christ means we become like him in, it, in, in who he is. So he shares, by grace, he shares his very nature with us mm. so that you and I become literally like him and we are divinized. The Catholic spiritual life is a process of divinization. We don't become equal to God, but through grace, we become what he is by nature. And that doesn't just happen. It is a systematic process that just as we grow up in the, the natural world, so we grow up in the supernatural world. And we move from being infants into adolescence into the spiritual adults. But you got you got to learn how to do it. You just had to learn how to be a man. We have to learn how to be a Catholic man. You know, a real spiritual man made in the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. That's what deification really is. We become divinized because we're becoming like him. That's what the spiritual life is ordered to. I know um, there's a, a really great book. I'm sure you're familiar with it, uh, The Fulfillment of All Desire by Ralph, Dr. Ralph Martin. And um, actually, my first book, Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul, was intended to take that pattern of, uh, of spiritual growth towards nuptial union to, to use you know stories from my life that kind of that that bring us to that process and I, there, I think he i think there's about a dozen or so church doctors that are kind of known for their for that for that teaching on their journey to through the spiritual life but there really is a there really is a, a process it, it, it's no it's just just like growing up from a, being an infant learning to to walk uh losing your teeth, getting new teeth, you know, uh, you know, that whole, there is a process that the Lord will, and if we know what path we're on, it's much easier, much more easy, easier to be available and not to run from it. That's the key. It's that there is a path and that's what the church lays out for us. That's really what the science of sainthood actually is. So when you're referencing doctors of the church that write on these and fathers of the church, and we, you know, I held up the book of St. John of the Cross earlier. He's obviously one of them, mystical doctor, and uh, Saint Teresa of Avila is another, and Augustine, and Aquinas, and Aqu Saint you know Dionysus, Aquinas. And, you know. 
Yeah. You know, Minus. you think of him as, it's, it's as all this guy stuff. all in his head, but no, he was a, he was a mystic. He's the master of the spiritual life. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And what these, all of them show us, and they use big words for these, you know, that they're not really part of our vernacular anymore, like the purgative, the illuminative and unitive ways right. and, and how we go through them. But really, it's just that process of growing up. But what's beautiful about it is, is it gives pinpoint direction to your spiritual life. So instead of just going to mass, saying your prayers, getting to confession as often as you possibly can, those things are the vehicle, right? But they travel a particular path. And these mm. spiritual masters have laid out for us what that path is. And when you're in the right vehicle, on the right path, then you're going to experience a transformation that leads to the perfection and deification for which you were made. Well, That's what it's all about. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about that path. You know, I was thinking, I think the, the, they say the, the, the first step in spiritual growth is, is uh, detachment. You know, I think as a surfer, when I, when I paddle out, I leave the aina, I leave the land behind me. I turn my back on my problems, my, my opportunity, all, everything that I've got on the land stays behind me. And if I look back at the land, I'll see, oh, there's a new building going up or there's a, this, is, this, this, this part of the, the rock walls decaying or, or the, the aina is always changing. But when you look out at the Makai towards the ocean, that's just deep blue water. There's surf, big surf, small surf, different directions. But, um, but the first thing is to paddle out and turn and turn and, and detach from those things that you cling to or that are clinging to you and learn to cling to God. Is, is that right? Is that the first step or what would you say is, is in the yeah, science? And I'd say included with I'd say included with that and, and joined to that is it's detachment, but it's a, it's a detox, right? I mm. mean, uh, you know, you're in the West, you know, you, you lived in California for a long time. Those guys are always Santa doing Cruz. detoxes. Santa Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> you never want to be around those people when they're doing a detox, right? <laughs> why? And, and I mean, this is why they call it the purgative way, right? You're getting rid of, you're purging your body of all your soul, yeah. of all that garbage yeah. that was inside of you. So right. you're cleansing, you're doing your kind of spiritual colon cleanse and you're getting rid of the garbage inside of you. So that's step one. That helps you to detach. You can't detach. I mean, it, it's a both and, right? It's the same thing. You're getting rid of those things in your life that keep you from relationship with God. That is the number one thing. And that's what kind of spiritual infancy is all about. So you start with the big stuff, the mortal sin in your life, and you start through the grace of God, you start focusing on those things to get rid of them. So then you can continue on in your growth as you, as you mature. Are you talking to me personally that I still have to get, take <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at you. you, there, you hey, you hey know. Matt, you know what? I, when I was in, when I was at Baylor, I was walking along the campus and, and as the sun, as the September turned into January, I noticed that the leaves fell from all the trees. But there was this one big branch that had fallen off one of the trees on my on my walk to class, and as it laid there, uh, it went from September when all the other leaves were in full foliage into January when there was no leaves on the trees at all. But the leaves on this dead tree clung to it; they didn't fall off. And I was wondering, I kept thinking, Lord, why, 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 why? And then finally, I went and talked to a biology professor. <laughs> he said, Oh, that's that, that's simple. On a living tree, the new life pushes off the dead leaf. And that's really what we're talking about is if you're if you're if you're grafted into Jesus and you have that personal daily time with the Lord, um, that 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 new life in Christ will push off that mortal sin and push off that attachment, you know, like that the dead leaf clinging. It'll push that away. It, 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 it's it's a process of, of, of being determined, but also a process of grace. We're talking with Matthew Leonard, one of my favorite people. Where do where do they find your your find you? at scienceofsainthood.com starring Matthew Leonard we'll be right back <laughs> of more, with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure Aloha this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach with a deep adventure moment you know, people ask me, what does it take to paddle out in big surf? You know, 20 foot plus surf is deadly surf. What does it take to paddle out in big waves? My son Jeremiah paddled, surfed 80 foot waves. What does it take to prepare to do that? And I give them my 20, 20, 20 rule. The first thing is you should be able to paddle your surfboard for 20 miles 
If you can't do that, don't paddle out in heavy surf because big surf can get bigger and you can find yourself locked outside uh, for forever, for a long, long time. Second thing is you should be able to hold your breath for the time that it takes the sun to set. It's an ancient Hawaiian tradition to pray the moment the sun hits the ocean until it sinks beneath it. And that's about two minutes and 20 seconds. If you can't do that, don't paddle out in big surf. The other thing is we dive down, grab a rock 20 feet deep and then run underwater. If you can't do that, don't paddle out in big surf. But the thing is in life, you're already out in big surf. Whether you like it or not, you are. What are you going to do to prepare? The 20, 20, 20 rule. Spend 20 minutes in prayer three times a day, or maybe spend 40 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes at night. But if you're a man and you're not praying an hour every day, you're in trouble. The people you love are in trouble. You should be getting up early and slaying dragons. Your children should see you pray. If you're not praying 20, 20, 20 a day, then we what we say in Hawaii when we see a guy on the beach that's wearing surf clothing, but he never goes out in big surf, we call them posers. If you're not spending an hour every day with the Lord, you're losing out. And the other thing, it's so much easier to pray for an hour a day than to pray, pray for five minutes. Because when you spend 30 minutes with the Lord, you want to spend 40. When you spend 40, you want to spend an hour. So follow the 20, 20, 20 rule in life. Spend an hour every day in prayer. This is Bear Wozniak with thedeepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I've been so excited about my guest. I forgot to tell, say things to you that my producer always wants me to say. We want to ask you, you men, come to Bear's Man Cave. Uh, it's getting more and more uh, in-depth and more I interesting and exciting, really, as, we, as we've as we grown. Men from around the world uh, join the secret Facebook group. You have to go to deepadventure.com to join. Uh, but then when you join, uh, you, you're with with a company of knuckle dragger um, misfits, like the kinds that joined uh, King David in the cave of Adullam, you know, the, the misfits, the, the ne'er-do-wells, the ones that were running from the law, I, and I will also say their mother-in-law. But they, they showed up there at the cave, and they formed each other, and God formed an, into the mighty men of valor. And now we're, we're uh, working to establish a school of manliness within the man cave where you can have a chance to be mentored, and we give you the tools uh, and the, to help to help uh, set specific goals in different areas of your lives, especially the spiritual area. You know, one of the things that happens as soon as uh, someone joins the man cave, one of the things we talk about is fitness to witness. And it's interesting how many men, uh, almost within the moment they get there, they go, "Okay, I got to start working out. I need to, you know, I need to, I need to be fit so I can fulfill my mission." So we touch on every area of your life, and twice a month we have a Zoom video chat meetup. And you can uh, also meet with your mentor once a month or so to uh, help you along your path. So join Bears Man Cave. You go to deepadventure.com. Oh, and I have a, even a better idea. Matthew Leonard has um, a website. He's our guest today. And what's the website called? Scienceofsanehood.com. You know, Matthew Leonard is a member of the Man Cave, but, uh, you know, he, he's... Uh, I have I have him there as a member, just so he can post and let people know some of the things that he has available for them from time to time. Because his his uh, his uh, understanding of of going deeper with the Lord is, is uh, profound, and so his his ministry helps shapes the shape the men in the man cave too, or, or help form them. So we're talking about the different steps. Um, 
I, I, we're re- talking about the purgative stage, which I think really is significant for for men. You know, we get sidetracked and we get focused on our our agendas and our careers and making money to provide for the family. What, what, what is it that the Lord begins to speak to, to, to men specifically about that, that purgative stage, that very first kind of stage of your spiritual journey? Well, I think to go back on something you touched on in our last segment, Bear, you, you talk about the purgative way and how it, this is when we start to grow in relationship with the Lord. And this is what men need to understand. I think a lot of guys and ladies as well are wondering, why is it I'm not making spiritual progress? Why can't I draw closer to the Lord? And you said it earlier, uh, you have to spend the time, right? Just like we're going to do anything well, you have to spend time in order to, to grow in facility of that thing. And unless you make a concerted effort as a man to, or a Catholic in general, to spend time with the Lord in real meditative prayer, you're simply not going to grow, period. I don't care what you do. I mean, maybe the Lord infuses you with a special thing and you have a special encounter. Normally speaking, unless you are spending time in real, authentic, Catholic, meditative prayer, you're done. Uh, St. Alfonso Gregori says, short of a miracle, a man who does not practice mental prayer will end up in mortal sin, right? And that's death. So you have to spend time. And we talk about relationships with the Lord and that's what prayer is prayer is a relationship and you know we mentioned earlier about how when we get to the end of our lives and our our judgment before the lord he's going to ask do i know you well this is where you get to know him if you don't have a life of prayer how can you get to know them it's just like with our spouses our children or friends in our lives if you don't converse with them and listen to them and you speak to them and you get to know each other intimately you don't know them at all and then how can you even love somebody you don't know and we claim to love jesus christ and yet we don't make a priority of spending time with him in quality prayer on a daily basis who are you fooling right and so we have to make an act of the will to say that i am going to do whatever i need to do in order to spend time with jesus christ so that my relationship with him grows i become more of the catholic man i'm supposed to be and i can help my family and my friends toward that same end it's not rocket science it's just so we've got to actually buckle down and do it and the beautiful thing is that god gives us the grace to do it you know so we have to avail ourselves of those graces and you can go to daily mass i i go to daily mass i, I know you kids. do i know you do i, I don't i don't I, get to I interview my life you. around it yeah I don't and get to interview you at certain this, times. It's yeah, it's exactly right. You know, you'll you'll contact me and I say, well, I'm, I'm just heading into mass or whatever. I right. can't imagine life without it. But you know what, Bear? I could go to daily mass for my entire life, and if I don't have a real life of prayer, right. that grace is falling flat because I am not prepared to receive. It's it. just religiosity. Prayer, it's just religiosity. It, it is. Then. Right. You need to have. I mean, the grace. The grace is there, but I'm not telling the soil of my heart to actually have it penetrate who I am. So we have to have that relationship with the Lord, and that happens in prayer. And, you know, we're, and, and the prayer is, um, I, you know, I challenge the men to an hour every day. You should be the man that when, I, I, how many times has Jack, your wonderful son, I know you have many other children, but I know Jack. Why, this is an interesting question. I think I've asked you this before. Where he's walked by and you're having a time of prayer and he sees his dad praying early in the morning or, or, or he knows you're going to church, but just he sees you being a man of prayer. But I remember you walked by his room one time and you saw him praying. Yeah, and reading the Bible and, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not, look, I'm not going to say he's doing it every day, obviously. Yeah. He's a 14-year-old kid now. St. Jack. But I have this, you know, I hope so. Yeah. But I, I'll tell you that um, unless our children see us doing that, how are they going to know? How are they going to know what to do unless you and I are not just talking about it, but we're modeling it for them and not having to talk about it all the time. They just know. Right. You know and, and my kids, my kids know that I get up before they do every day so that I can spend time in prayer. And I'm hoping, and, and it's not just that I, I do talk about it. I, I encourage them to prayer and we, we pray family rosaries as well, but I got to practice what I preach and it's not just so that I can be an example for them. It's so that I can go to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't imagine life and, without and well, it. Well, you know, we, we, we really ultimately, you know, at the end, when we look all the way through, through these different stages, our, our goal really, and you know, this is true, isn't to go to heaven. It's really just to love God back. 
and everything else just you know falls into place. It's just to love God back with a with the love that he he gave us. The, the beauty of prayer is people say I've heard someone say you need to st- I know it's hard to pray so just start out with 5 minutes a day. And and that's hard. In fact, it's impossible. Um just pray for 10 minutes a day. It's too hard to do that. 15 minutes a day, too hard. Well, 20 minutes that gets easier. It really does. And 25 minutes with the Lord is easier than 20 minutes. And a half hour with the Lord is even better because you really don't, when you just try to parse it into five minute bits, you really, you really, you really not, you really not experience that full. Uh, I know like sometimes you just got to go surfing. It's the same thing way with me. If I don't have that hour with the Lord every day, I just like, I'm missing something. But, and, and for men out there that are dealing and every single man probably does is dealing with lust or pornography and things like that. People ask me, well, what's the solution to that? An hour every day with the Lord in prayer. Because when you have that relationship, everything else just begins to fall away. You have to resist the devil and he will flee. But you have to have that. And I see people here on the beach, Matt, they wear these Abercrombie and Fitch shirts and they say lifeguard on them. I wouldn't be running to them to ask for help, right, when the time (laughs) came. We call those people posers. And if you're a man and you say you're a Christian and you're not spending that time with the Lord every day, you're a poser. So, um, and you're missing out most of all, but every morning we get, to, I get up early and I have my, my liturgy, the hour time. And then my wife and I get together and we do the Magnificat part of the Magnificat together, which is an adjunct to the, or part of the liturgy in a sense. And we, and the first thing in the day I, I say to her, well, what, what's good? What are we going to do today? Just like I say to the Lord, order our day, Lord, what are we going to do today? And at the end of the day, I always say, tell me everything, everything about your day. And that's what we want to. We that's a, true with us too. We want to ask. Uh, we want we want to have that sort of intimate time with the Lord. I'm I'm talking too much. I, I'm going to give you more time when we come back. I get you get me stirred up. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We're talking with Matthew Leonard. And what's the name of your website again, Matthew? Scienceofsainthood.com. Um, uh, well, and and if they go there, there's really some cool stuff at your site. There's a whole there's you, a whole. You know if, if I have a second, they can actually see 20, more than 20 of the lessons. These are professional video lessons that are step-by-step, you know, sainthood lessons, so to speak, based on the teachings of the church over the last 2,000 years. If you go to scienceofsainthood.com, you can actually see more than 20 of them absolutely free. No credit card, nothing to cancel. You can just sign up and you get a couple of weeks for free in there and just experience what it's all about. And these are beautiful. And, I'm sorry, Matt. These are beautiful teachings. And what very well professionally done, I must say, too. And we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. So in the next 10 minutes, Matthew Leonard is going to tell us everything we need to know about how to uh, grow it uh, to the science of sainthood. Uh, uh, a good friend of mine, Matt Leonard. Matt, tell us more. We've been talking about the purgative stage. Take us through kind of like the, the uh, Reader's Digest version uh, of what that path looks like uh, towards intimacy with God. You know, it starts with the purgative way, as we said. This is where you detach yourself from all you know, the bigger stuff, basically. And as you start to get to, you know, a, a certain stage or section of the purgative way, what happens is what John of the Cross calls the dark night of sense. 
And so the Lord starts to work on you at a very deep level. And this is a lot of times where people get frustrated, frankly, because they feel like, hey, I, I was really feeling the presence of the Lord previously, and now I'm not feeling it so much. You know, am I doing something wrong? Uh, and so people get a little unnerved. But really what's happening is the, the Lord is actually drawing closer to you, and you haven't yet developed a spiritual sense to see his presence so close to you. So the, the analogy actually that John of the Cross uses is, it's like staring at the sun, you know, you look at it, but it blinds you because you can't see it. So you're actually blinded to the presence of the Lord because he's so bright, he's gotten so close that he's blinding your ability to actually acknowledge him. So you don't feel him so much because also you're focused on your downstairs feelings. Mm. Right? And that's how you experience the Lord, but he's actually starting to move and work on you to draw you upstairs, uh, so to speak. This is one of the things I kind of draw, up, draw out in the science of sainthood. Beautiful. But you enter into this stage and your prayer life starts to change. Uh, you don't feel the same urge to necessarily continue reading through the books as much, and you start to set things aside and you just want to be with the Lord. This is the transition of the night of sense or the passive purification of the senses. And that transition leads to entrance into the second stage, which is the illuminative way. And it's called that because Jesus is the light of the world, right? And so you are illuminated with the light and love of God. And in the second stage, instead of working on the big stuff so much, uh, you are now starting to move on to growing in virtue. And you are starting to work with the Lord is starting to work on the deeper weeds and roots of sin that are in your life, your pride and your vanity and those kinds of things. And you continue on through this stage uh, until you get to the, what's probably the scariest part of the spiritual life, which is called the dark night of the soul. And this is where you have zero sense whatsoever of God's presence. And really what's happening is you are being united to the cross of Christ. So along with our Lord, you're crying out, my God, my God, you know, why hast thou forsaken me? And you don't sense him at all. That said, you've grown in virtue and relationship with the Lord throughout this process that you don't feel like you're abandoned, so to speak. I mean, that's what it feels like, but you know that's not true because you're so spiritually mature at this point. But the Lord is so close to you at this point that you cannot sense him at all. Mother Teresa experienced this for about 40 years. That's not normal, but it shows you how amazing she was that even with no sense of the Lord's presence, she was able to do what it is that she did. But once you progress through that stage, uh, you finally move into the unitive way, uh, spiritual marriage, you know, as St. Teresa of Avila talked about it. And this unitive way is the highest level, so to speak, of the spiritual life that you can be attained on this side of heaven, where you enter into a union with the Lord that is pretty much beyond words. When you read the, the saints, they don't even know how to describe what happens to you in this stage because we're not talking about something natural. We're talking about the supernatural, like the infinite is being poured into the finite and words cannot express what it's like when God puts you in his tractor beam and starts to draw you to him and there's nothing you can do about it. And what's happening is you're literally being deified. And it's that kind of final plank before you step to the other side and you join him uh, for all eternity. That's those are the basics of the stages. And that's a lifelong process. You know, I don't know that I've ever heard it spoken so with such clarity. Just very, you know, it's well, I appreciate that. It's not rocket science, but it is a science of sainthood. And it's it's. It's work. I mean, we have to, you know, acknowledge that. You know, every guy listening to this knows that in order to move ahead, you got to work, right? It's Amen. the same thing in the spiritual life. The beautiful thing is that we are empowered by grace. That the Lord, it ultimately, it's all about grace. This isn't us doing all these things on our own. It's hard, and we show the Lord we want these things to happen to us by putting the time in and and get showing up to prayer every day getting to the sacraments as often as possible, and then listening to the voice of the Spirit as he's moving us down this road. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, and if we're faithful to it, the Lord wants us more than we do. And he will mm -hmm. draw us closer and closer and closer because the greatest desire of his heart is to make you one with him and become part of his divine family. So he's making you divine in this process so that you can join that family in heaven. And you know, the thing is, is this process for some may, may continue on. There's a part of heaven called purgatory. And, and um, Protestants don't really understand this with the solo fide, that once saved, always saved phenomena. Almost like, it's, all, it's more like, it's not really faith, that's presumption to say, I, I believe in God, so I'm going to go to heaven. I gave my life to Jesus long ago, so I'm going to go to heaven. That's really presumptuous. That's not faith. But 
that purgative stage for some, uh, you may be going to that part of heaven called purgatory to continue to burn off your that selfishness, that, that soulishness, that anything that you cling to other than God. And the way that's burned away is by you, you, see, the, you see God. You're just not in his full presence. I don't know how to describe it. Maybe you can do a better job than I can. But that per- it's not like the minute someone dies, boom, I'm going to take away your dignity and I'm just going to force this holiness on you. It, co- it, it continues, but in a much stronger and more powerful way if we don't finish that work on earth. Talk to us about that. Yeah, you know, it's great that you bring this up because we're talking about the dark night of the soul as this final transition between the illuminative and unitive ways, the second and third stages. And really... Most people don't make it to that point, Bear. I mean, they're just not willing to do what it is they need to do in order to get to that level. I think a lot of us have delusions of grandeur with regard to our spiritual lives, but the reality is most of us are in the purgative way. Right. And when you get to the the dark night of the soul, this transition between the second and third stages, and you are joined to the cross of Christ, if that doesn't happen in this life, it will in the next. And that's what purgatory is. Our salvation it, Jesus dying on the cross didn't just get us off the hook, so to speak. It's a representative sacrifice. There's an element that's a substitution, like he did it, we didn't have to. But our salvation comes from joining ourselves to the mystical body of Christ, our, our crucified Lord. And so that's what happens in the spiritual life as you mature. That's what the dark night of the soul is. It's being united to Calvary. So if it doesn't happen now, that's what happens in purgatory. It's that final uniting ourselves and dying completely to ourselves. You, know, you said way back at the top of the show about uh, dying and, and how Jesus died for us and this is the essence of our salvation. Our salvation comes through self-death. That's what mm-hmm. it is. That's how we are conformed to Jesus Christ. And it happens ultimately in these higher stages of the spiritual life. Why? Because we're becoming more like Jesus Christ, the Christ who suffered and died and rose again so that you and I could be saved. And so we suffer and die and rise again, just like him. Exactly. And, it's, and it's not like you lose yourself. Uh, the, the closer no. you are to the Lord, uh, I was, was with Deacon Harold the other day, talking with him, and then Deacon Gerard, too, the day after that, both said that you never feel more like yourself than when you're in the presence of the Lord. And so this this purgative, this illuminative, and this, this, this uh, the, the nuptial union, um, it, 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 you'll feel more like yourself than you ever have as you go through that process. But for you men out there, so many men, I know me, my, my, I, I get up and I look at my, my desk and it's just waiting there like just get over here, you know. But I know I, I open up the windows, I see the view outside, I, I sit in my prayer chair. It's a different chair. It's only used for prayer and study. And I have my, t- my time with the Lord. But the liturgy of the hour, I think it's so interesting. The word liturgy means the work of the people. So you men that want to get productive and want to get to work, your most important work is to is, is to is to is to spend time with the Lord. Otherwise, and, and also by the way, one of the keys to being uh, pr- productive is to um, you want to not just work, you want to be productive. When you spend time with the Lord, you don't spin your wheels so much, you don't waste your time so much. Your your life becomes more directive. Matthew Leonard, um, the science of sainthood dot com. Everyone that's listening to this show should go and, and click on that and, and make available and, and, and take advantage of those first 20 uh, videos that, that Matthew has there. We're I, out I'd of time. also just say, you got time. I, I, want, yeah. I added some guided meditations to that so to help Praise people God. actually do meditative prayer. It's there and they can actually get to it as well by texting the word saint to 66866. Yeah, and the word meditation, it means to ruminate. It, it means like a cow that eats and then throws up and then chews and then swallows and throws up again and chews and then swallows. Uh, the, the Hebrew word is to ruminate, which is to just meditate on, on God's word, meditate on, on the Lord. It's not like Eastern meditation where you empty yourself uh, and leave yourself empty. Christian, Christian meditation is I must decrease, he must increase. Matthew Leonard, thank you for joining us and thank you for the just the rock that you are in my, in my life. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Get ready. I'm about, to, I'm about to say something loud. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man. 
I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com.